Hey there CoGrid community. Today, we're diving into creating a sleek glassy menu style card drawer animation effect using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Shout out to Nathan Smith's portfolio for the inspiration. We'll be leveraging GSAP for those smooth animations, including that chic background blur effect. If you find this tutorial helpful, don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to support the channel. Let's dive in. In our HTML structure, we start with two primary wrappers. The first, site content, contains all our background content that'll get a blur effect when the cards are revealed. The second, container, is designated for our cards. Inside site content, there's a content wrapper filled with multiple rows, which will house placeholder headings for demonstration. Transitioning to our container, we nest a cards wrapper. Each card here is given a unique ID and comprises two main elements, card in, which displays the logo, and card text that holds both a card title and card info. Feel free to customize the card contents as desired. After setting up a few sample cards, we'll be all set to jump into the CSS. Let's start by resetting the basics for all elements. We're zeroing out margins and paddings to ensure a clean slate. The magic phrase box sizing border box keeps sizing consistent. Next up, the body element. By setting its width and height to 100VW and 100VH respectively, we ensure a full screen experience. A dark background and bold white text color set the tone. And for that touch of elegance, we're employing the FK display font. For the site content, make it positioned absolutely. It covers the entire viewport's width and at least the full viewport's height. Next, we have Content Wrap, positioned absolutely and perfectly centered. It gives the whole content a neat presentation. Targeting row to house our flexible rows, with space between each item. Flexbox at its best. Our H1 is given special treatment, styled with the notch grotesque font, boasts a larger than life size and a lighter weight, uppercase and ready to make a statement. Now let's focus on our cards. We're granting it the power of being fixed, meaning it stays put even as you scroll. Positioned at the top right corner of the viewport, with width and height set to max content, it takes up only the space it needs. Zooming in on individual card elements. Positioned relatively, each card boasts a width of 300 pixels and a height of 100 pixels. Flexbox is at work, aligning items at the start of the cross axis. Margins provide just the right spacing, while padding cushions the content. Font size, 13 pixels to be precise, ensures legibility. The text color is a proud white, and a background color with a hint of transparency adds depth. The magic touch comes from the backdrop filter with a blur of 16 pixel, adding a subtle visual interest. Rounded corners with an 8 pixel border radius give the cards a polished look. Transition effects for the background color and text color lend an elegant touch. And with a cursor set to pointer, these cards practically beg to be clicked. Next the card image, with a width and minimum width of 70 pixel, and a height of 70 pixel, it's a tidy frame. Rounded corners with a 6 pixel border radius. Inside card image, the image element takes center stage, filling its parent with a 100% width and height. Object fit cover ensures the image fits perfectly. As for card text, it occupies the width available, leaving a comfortable margin on the left. Card title gets some individual attention too, with margins of 4 pixels on top and bottom for that perfectly balanced look. And then there's card info, showing off a charming shade of gray. For the toggle wrapper, set its position relative and justify content flex end to move the button to right. It won't for now but it will as we set its display property to flex via JavaScript. Inside the toggle, the button element takes center stage. Without borders or outlines, adorned with a background of gray. The text is a proud white, with margins on the sides and padding top and bottom. A smooth border radius of 20 pixels completes its charming appearance. Transition effects for background color and text color make it a smooth operator, while the cursor pointer beckons interaction. In the button hover a hover turns the background white, and the text color dark. Next, we will set each card's position such that they stack on top of each other, adding visual depth.
Don't forget to hide the toggle button using display none for now. That's it. Time to make it working. To save some time, I've already picked out all the elements we need using the query selector. Let's get into the action. We're starting by setting up a flag to remember whether the cards are open or not. First, we want to open the cards by clicking the last one. So, we check if the cards are not already open. If not, we'll make the cards slide down to their proper positions, giving a cool reveal effect. Now, let's talk about the toggle container. We're using it to make the button appear smoothly by fading it in. The button will be shown at the right thanks to Flex M. At the same time, we're adding a little blur to the site content for a fancy touch. At the end of this, we'll change the flag to keep track of the open cards. Now, let's talk about the reverse. When we click the show less button, we want the cards to go back up. So, we'll listen for that click. If the cards were open, we'll move them back up one by one. The toggle container and the button will fade out gracefully. As the cards close, the blur on the site content will go away too. And, as you might have guessed, we'll update the flag again. And that's the whole story. A simple sequence of steps that brings your page to life.